Welcome back. Today we're on Great Slave Lake in Yellowknife Bay. We've got some weather moving in from the south, so the water's gonna get pretty rough. We've already got two, three footers out there. Big rollers coming in means big wind coming, so we're gonna stick her close to home, and we're gonna fish the bay and move ourselves up the river later in the day. Today we're just gonna kinda junk fish. Just gonna cast a whole bunch of different types of baits, and we're gonna look for whatever bites. So we're always looking for ink canoe, northern pike, and lake trout are the top three. If we're lucky, we'll catch a grayling, maybe a whitefish. We'll see. In the fall, the Cisco are migrating up the Yellowknife system, up the Yellowknife River to spawn. So we're gonna follow around, see if we can find some bait, fish around it, and see what happens. Usually, rule of thumb is find the bait, find the fish. So we'll see what happens. But stick with us. I'm your host, Brian Gregory, and this is Fish in the Arctic. Guy. He's got marks on him. Something big in here might have ate him. Ha, ah, one on the board. It wasn't a great big one this time, so. It's good. Still got something to work forward to. I'm just tossing a swim bait right now. Just looks like a Cisco. It might be a bit long. I might uh, cut her down a bit, shorten it up. I think I'm kind of getting a little short strikes. So maybe that'll fix it. Another little pike. Fishing's pretty slow, got a few small pike, nothing big. We've gone as far as we can up the Yellowknife River. We're halfway to Tartan Rapids. We've scanned the whole river, not seeing any balls of bait at all, not seeing many large fish. So we're gonna have to find option B, get ourselves to Tartan Rapids where all the fish are probably at. Uh, we're gonna have to find a jet boat, and we're gonna pull this thing out of the water, put it on the trailer, and go up to the next lake and work our way downstream. Anyway, until then, stick with us. We're with Ian Ellsworth from Trailblazer Tours. Good morning, Ryan. Today we're going to jet boat up the Yellowknife River up to Tartan Rapids on the hunt for some whitefish. It's the end of October, so it's about the last weekend we're going to have the boats in the water. So we're going to go up there and hopefully we can fill the boat with some whitefish and maybe catch a giant pike along the way. So we'll see you up there. So here we are, we made it to Tartan Rapids. And uh, there's a few more people here than we thought. Everyone's up looking for Cisco's. Use them as bait, some people eat them. It's the prize catch of the fall. We're just uh, throwing a big bonnie bait up into the rapids. 
I'm hooked onto something there. I don't know what it was. Might have foul hooked a whitefish or something, but Let's see if there's a big pike lurking around down there, and we're gonna try do some flow fishing for whitefish. All right, we're hooked up. Got ourselves a nice white fish. I've learned it's good not to count them until they're in the net. <laughs> I have five pound line on, so I'll take it easy. Fish are an excellent fight, fighting fish, especially against some of these bigger ones. Oh. Yo, the trick is getting them in the net. Barbless hooks can be kind of tricky. Boom! We have dinner. All right, right. we're gonna keep this one <laughs> and uh, cook up a nice shore lunch later on today. See what happens. So hopefully we can get a few more. Maybe we'll get lucky and have a few to go home, but this is Limey. I'll let you take care of him. We'll dispatch him. We're gonna winterize the E-Tech. It's uh, pretty simple. We're at the bow lodge. We're on the truck. To our screen. We've got functions. We go up. Winterization. There it goes. It's that simple. So I can just winterize my boat motor right here at the dock. Once I'm done, I'll drain all the water out and I'm ready for winter. And that's that. <laughs> just the push of a button. Winterized. Done. Now I just have to clean it out, empty it, put all the stuff away, and wrap it up for winter. Hee haw. Should be ice fishing soon. Anyway, till then. Lots of activity here today. A lot of people up looking for Cisco's and filling their freezers with some whitefish. The deal with the Cisco's is you can use a big dip net. You'll see big long poles in the background. And you're allowed to keep 175 Cisco's, so a lot of times people use them for bait when fishing in the East Arm for lake trout. Uh, the really big Cisco's uh, can be really good to eat. You can get them about 10, 12 inches. It's like a small little stream trout, and they're basically just a whitefish species. You can uh, just gut them, basically cut the head off and dip them in batter and fry them and eat the whole thing. Bones and all, they just melt. Oh, well, got one on finally. Changed it up a little bit and I got a knot in my line and had to cut some off. And so the result of that, I ended up fishing a little shallower. I decided to just keep it there and it seems to be the trick. So we'll see if we can get her in the net. Boom. We're eating like kings now. So you can see, kind of a nice one. It's just that red worm hooked in the top of the mouth. Perfect, but it's about the hardest spot. Oh, just pops right out. Nice little whitefish. It's gonna make a great shore lunch. But we're onto them now. They're jumping around again, so the people behind us have no problem catching fish. So we're just starting to figure it out. So let's see if we can get a few more and we can uh, take some home with us. So stick around. Hopefully we get a few more of these in the boat. Well, today we've been using, mostly been using my 13 foot float rod. It's a streamside steel header custom rod. So it's designed for float fishing. It's got that, it's 13 feet long, so I can manage my line when I have a long drift. I can use a very light line. I've got a three pound tippet on the end. What I've done now is I've bulked up my shot because I'm, I've extended my, my float quite a bit. So I probably am fishing about all oh, pretty close to 10 feet down. So it's fairly deep here and it seemed to be the trick. It got me another bite, got another fish in the boat. So well, I got just one keep on, trying boys. different things. You got a fish? Yeah. On the spoon? Yeah. Whoa. Time to get the net. 
What do you got? Got a lake trout. Spectacular. Lake trout. Bonus catch. We're gonna let this fish go. It's uh, not very often you catch a lake trout this far up, so they are spawning in the fall, so we're gonna put them back, let them do his thing, and who knows? Maybe we'll catch another one. It'd be a good omen. Let her go, we'll catch a <laughs> griffin giant. So that might have been what we had following earlier. I was casting that spoon earlier and I had something yeah. follow in and yeah, could have been a lake trout. Yeah. I thought it was maybe a coney, but uh, the whitefish generally don't chase something big like that, so it's good. Big predatory fish. Bonus catch. Didn't expect that. That's awesome. Stick with us, see if we can do it again. <laughs> We're both gonna be casting for lake trout now. <laughs> so Trailblazer Tours is your, your new tourism business? It is, yeah. How long have you been in the tourism business? I actually just, I got set up in around May and I started operation in June. Oh wow, since your first year. Yeah, it's my first season. So how did your first season go? It went really well. Uh, it's just been awesome just to get out and, uh, you know, show people around the Yellowknife area and catch some fish. So what kind of tours do you offer? I do um, a couple of different tours. I've got uh, like a waterfront tour around Yellowknife. I also have a two hour tour which brings people up here. And then I do a half day fishing and a full day fishing. All right on. And that, uh, I take people out to different areas on, on Great Slave Lake. So do you have any highlights from your first year? I think, well, we caught quite a few fish, but I think the actual highlight was just getting out and meeting different people. I think that's probably what I enjoyed the most. Right on, that's what it's all about. Absolutely, it's pretty cool. Like, well, I thought I would probably get bored of running this river, but every trip, even though it's the same landscape, it's different. Every, every trip is different. Wow. No, it's great to get to this section of the river. I'm not able to get my big boat up here. The rocks are just... Uh all over the place. The water's too shallow, so it's nice to get in a jet boat and see this part of the river. I've been to the upper stretches, but it can be kind of busy because you can get there, so everyone goes. Yeah, for sure. I know we've talked about it in the past, about getting out fishing together, so it's nice we finally, finally did it. to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's great. We'll have to do more often. Yeah, so if you're ever in Yellowknife and you just want to get out for a day, I encourage you to uh, check out Trailblazer Tours, get out on a day trip, even if it's just get out for a few hours, go for a cruise. Check out the bay, see some of the scenery. You find you have to uh, book in advance? You have lots of uh, last minute windows open up periodically? Yeah, usually there's there's lots of slots and you know, if you're a little flexible, you know, I can usually get people in within a day or so. Oh wow. And in the summer I'll run basically from noon till midnight. Well, I guess I it doesn't to, get right? dark. It doesn't so get dark, so that's, I've done quite a few evening trips and. They're oh. actually a lot of fun. That'd be nice. This is not like a sideline for me. This is what I do full time, so I'm available anytime, really. Wow, yeah. that's great. Something I've always thought about is having a tourism business, getting out guiding, do a little bit on the side, and it's fun. Like you say, it's just fun to meet new people. And yeah. Sometimes teach people to fish, catch them the biggest fish of their life at times. Yeah. It's pretty great. To see it's actually quite a bit of fun when you take people that have never fished and they hook into their first one. Oh yeah. It's spectacular. Which is pretty exciting. It's one of those things that's just priceless. Yeah. We're going to eat shore nuts. After when we cut this out, we don't fit it in the water. We leave it on shore for the seagulls and the birds. And there's his eye. We can't poke him in the eye. We're going to poke. That is the setting up. And then we're going to clean dishes after. I'm going to clean dishes. Eagle, you get to have a big, big and his friends get to come over with him, right? Oh yeah? Yep. We'll have a, a party? Yep. All the birds are going to come over. And you see this piece here? 
There's the big one, and here's the little one right there on my, on my finger. See it? And Daddy calls him Butterfly, right? Yep. His name is Butterfly, right? We call fishies sometimes, we call them pretty different names, and this is pretty soft. See, sticks to my boat. Oh, let's put them up here. That's the meat we're going to eat, so we don't want to get it dirty. Here, I'm going to talk about this meat. We have this fish here. I just cleaned my hands, so I don't want to touch many stuff. I don't want to touch um, skills or yake blood. I'm just going to touch the meat and see if there's any bones. But there's not. You see that? Right. So... See this? I'll pass it around to you. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Okay. Let's cook some meat. Well, here we are. We're having uh, pike tacos. It's not always good to have greasy fish for supper, but. No. Yeah. We're enjoying it. We're outside. We're having fun and we're being entertained and we're learning lots from Arizona here with Fish and Winslow. Yeah, you're having fun? Oh, we got another one on. It's taken a bit to get this next fish, but persistence pays off. It's not huge, but he's a white fish. Fish are great to eat, but it's important too to remember to uh, not keep them all. It's good to let some go. So we ate two today, so we're gonna let this guy go before I drop him back into the water. He goes <laughs> full of slime. All right, we're back on the board, so we figured something out. We're gonna keep trying here and see if we can get a few more. Maybe we can take a few home for the freezer. So stick with us, we'll be back. So it's important in the Northwest Territories, uh, you cannot discard of your fish in the water. Um, because we're so far north, we don't have animals like turtles and stuff that's gonna eat this. So. We leave it on shore. There's lots of eagles around. There's seagulls here too, but I bet there's there's an eagle on that other island over there, and he'll see this when we leave, and he'll come over and he'll have some dinner too. So we've taken all the edible meat off of this carcass, so we're just gonna set it aside here. All right. So we gave it an honest try. We got what three white fish in the boat? Three white fish. We had boat. shore lunch. That was great. That's what it's all about: coming out, having some fresh fish on the shore. Ian cooked us up a great shore lunch. We're going to uh, salvage the last hour or so of the day. We're going to start making our way back to Yellowknife. There's a couple deep holes on the Yellowknife River. We're going to go through and see if we can't catch a giant fish. We're hoping for a big giant pike, but who knows, maybe there's more lake trout. Uh, an ink canoe would be a bonus. We've caught two species today. It'd be pretty cool to you know, round it out with a third, maybe even a fourth species. So you don't know unless you try. So we're going to make our way down there, throw some big giant baits and see what happens. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, well, we've made it back to the dock. Thank you very much, Ian. It was Thanks, a Ryan. great day. Thanks for getting awesome us up day. to Tartan Rapids. It's nice to uh, see that end of the rapids. You bet. Yeah, I don't get there very often, so. Yeah. yeah, we had a great day. We had shore lunch. We got a few fish and bonus lake trout. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, for sure. But uh, it's just good to remember, it's not always about how many fish you catch. It's about getting outside, enjoying the outdoors. Get some fish, have a shore lunch, get a little taste of things. We're able to let a few fish go. 
Uh, we had plenty more on that uh, just didn't make it to the boat, so that, that's fishing. So that's the way it happens. We saw people around us, they were catching fish, no problem, but we just couldn't figure them out. So yeah, unfortunately uh, winter's coming, so we don't have a whole lot of daylight to play with. So yeah, the darkness is coming, so we're going to retreat to our houses where it's nice and warm. Yep. We've got a nice turkey dinner to go home to. So Wait for the ice to form and go after them again. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, we'll have to try and get out again sometime. Absolutely. Maybe ice fishing or maybe next summer when it's a little warmer, for a little sure. more time and a little fish is maybe a little more active. Yeah, it's hard. I haven't spent a lot of time fishing out here in the fall, so it's still kind of figuring out what mm -hmm. things, what thing, what the fish are doing. So, yeah, it takes a bit of time, but yeah, yeah. yeah thank you very much. Oh, no. yeah, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to take you out. So remember, if you're in Yellowknife, you got a little bit of time to kill. You want to go to fishing, or you just want to go for a boat tour. I encourage you to check out Trailblazer Tours. Ian Ellsworth, the owner, operator, uh, he'll get you out. You have a great time on the water, and uh, he teach you a little bit, a little bit about Yellowknife, and hopefully get you into some nice fish. Anyway, until next time, this is Fish in the Arctic. I'm your host, Ryan Gregory. We'll see you again next time.